In this video, I'm going to show you what's in my emergency medical bag and it's coming right up. If we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's talk about what's in my emergency medical bag. I've gotten lots of questions and comments on my last video about what's in my medicine cabinet and my first aid kit and there were several suggestions that people made but I wanted to make a distinction between what I keep in a first aid kit at home, in my medicine cabinet at home, and an emergency medical bag that I can take along with me. So in this video, we're looking specifically at my emergency medical bag right here. And this particular bag used to be a fishing tackle box. It was one that my husband had. He must have at least five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten tackle boxes in the garage. Every year he would get a new one. And this one was one he hadn't been using for a while and it was actually pretty clean. So I was really glad to get it. So I took the containers out of it and filled it with things for my emergency medical purposes. So one of the first things I did was I put some tape right here on the front, just as a reminder to him, if I said, honey, go grab the emergency medical bag, he'll see the little white cross here and know right away that this is the bag that I want him to get. And if we ever have to leave our home for whatever reason and need to take an emergency bag with us, we can just grab it by the handle here, or it's got a nice little shoulder bag and I can grab it that way and we're good to go. So now let me show you what's in it and we'll start with the outside pockets first. So right here on the back pocket, there's really not very much. I just put a little bottle of water here just in case I need it for either watching a wound or if I need to offer a drink or something like that to someone. So just a little bottle of water there and then over here is just a little um, packet of sunscreen. So that's what's back here. Over here in this little pocket, I've got some Hall's uh, cough drops, something to soothe a cough in case someone should need that. A little cup that I can use to measure out medication, liquid medication for someone. A box of Benadryl allergy relief medication. We have lots of allergies in my family and whenever we're out particularly fishing or if we're out taking a picnic and someone gets into something that they shouldn't and they end up with some allergic reactions, these are always good to use. A pair of scissors and a tube of Benadryl anti-itch cream because like I said, when you get into something that's causing quite a bit of itch, you need something to help address that right away. So that's what I have here in this little pocket. And then there's a little net pocket here that I can add additional things should I need to. Now let's see what's on the other side. So on this side, in this little netting, I just got a little bottle of hand sanitizer. And when I look inside here, I've got just like a little miniature kit, a little sewing kit. And what I've got in here is a few needles, some thread, a couple of boxes of matches, and then a thimble. I always use a thimble typically when I'm using a sewing needle. So just a little miniature sewing kit. Now, why do I need something like this? Well, if I need to take out a splinter, I've got three needles in this box here to help me do that. Two are very tiny, very sharp applique needles, and the other is more of a regular sewing needle so that I can get splinters out with that. And I put in this brightly colored thread just in case. I wouldn't imagine that a situation should become dire enough that I would have to put in sutures, but if I did, I could use this thread here. And then of course, here's a thimble, and then I've got a couple boxes of matches so that I could use the matches to kind of heat the tip of the needle to sterilize that. So this little bag here, 
I've got a four inch ace wrap as well as a much longer um, wrap type binder. This is something that you could use to wrap around the back. You know, it is a elastic, somewhat like an ace wrap, but it does have a Velcro band to help you snug it up. So let's say there's been some back strain or something like that, you need to support the back, you can use this. So that's what's in this pocket. And like I said, I can't imagine ever needing to actually put in stitches in someone. That's not something I've ever done in all my years of practice. I've never put in sutures myself. But I suppose if there was truly a dire emergency, I could give it a try. But not something I would want to do. Okay, now let's see what's inside the bag itself. So right here in the top of the bag is a plastic Ziploc compartment. And I've got some things up there. So I've got two sets of face masks in there, individually wrapped. I've got another empty Ziploc bag. And then I've got a bag which contains medical information. And in this Ziploc bag, which is sealed against moisture, I have a little booklet. And in this little booklet here, I've got a list of our names, our phone numbers, our physician's names and phone numbers, a list of our medications, things that might be needed for emergency purposes. Hopefully, neither one of us would be incapacitated at one time that we wouldn't be able to answer for the other. But just in case, I have that information in here. So why do you need this information written down? Even though that information is stored in our cell phone, well, should you find yourself in a situation where your cell phone has died or cell phone coverage is not readily available, then at least if you've got things written down, then once there's access to a landline or emergency help arrives, they can get this information and then use it. So that's why it's important to have it not only in your cell phone, but also readily accessible in a hard copy. And I've also got a pen in here. Even though I usually have a pen in my handbag, if I'm digging around in this emergency bag, I'm in there for a reason, so I may not want to take the time to look in my handbag for one. So now let's take a look at what's inside. I've got it organized in a series of pouches. This first pouch right here, of course, is my first aid kit, and I'll show you what's in that. And this is just a basic first aid kit. So in here, I've got a couple of sanitary napkins, if you need those for a large wound, and then two small flat pads, three by threes. And then over here, I've got a box of Q-tips, and then there are a couple of floss picks in there. And then some large Band-Aids. So that's what's in the top. So down here I've got some disposable gloves, some fresh snaps or little hand wipes, those things they give you at barbecue places to kind of wipe your things off. And then I have this bottle of first aid antiseptic spray. And it's just something that will just kind of help to soothe the wound. If it's stinging, burning, that kind of thing, this can kind of ease some of the discomfort and also offer a little bit of antiseptic protection. Just a little package of facial tissues, here I've got a syringe, so let's say I've got a child and they can't take pills and I need to give them some medication. I could crush the pill up uh, in water and then administer it this way, so the syringe. A little bag of sunscreen. And then I've got three different sizes of tape. A small, kind of a half inch size of plastic tape, two inch paper tape, and then a inch and a half paper tape. Over here in this little container, 
I've just got more band-aids and that kind of thing. These here are actually butterfly coverlets in case there's a laceration or something that you need to close. So I've got that. And then just different size band-aids are in there. More dermicidal hand wipes, a pair of tweezers, which are really good for taking out splinters and different things like that. And then in this bag here, I've got some antiseptic towelettes if you need to clean a wound with that way. Some Clorox wipes, a tube of Neosporin ointment, a tube of Cortisone 10 Plus. It's a hydrocortisone ointment to help with itching. And then under here, I've got more band-aids, different sizes, different size band-aids. Here I've got some alcohol prep pads. And in case you're wondering what those are, these are those little alcohol pads that you see them use in the hospital when they're starting IVs and different things like that. So I've got quite a few of those in there. And then also I have an oral thermometer. So that's what's in this little packet. Now keep in mind that this is just a basic first aid kit. It is meant to take care of the basic first aid kind of situations that come up. Cuts, scrapes, bruises, that kind of thing. So this next pouch is what I call my ladies days pouch. This pouch has the things in it that we ladies might need for menstrual supplies, but there are also things in it that you can use if you have a serious wound, something that's bleeding quite a bit, and you need to cover that wound while well, there's some things in here you might use for that. So let's see what's in here. First off, I've got another pack of facial tissue, and then I've got a couple little razors just in case there's a wound and you need to shave the hair to dress it properly. So there's a couple of just little big razors and then a little container of shaving cream. And then for our ladies days, I've got some sanitary napkins, but again, if you need to use this to cover a large wound, you can, as well as some mini pads in here. And then on the other side, I've got a bunch of tampons. And I put those things in this little gray pouch. It's just a little bit more private that way, but they're still easily accessible should you need them. And you can always say in the gray pouch, get this. So there's that. And then the other things are just in Ziploc bags. So in this Ziploc bag, I have my flats, my flat pads. So I've got five four by fours. five three by threes and five two by twos. That just means this flat gall square is four inches by four inches or three inches by three inches or two inches by two inches. And I did take a look at the American Red Cross website. And this is the amount of gauze pads that they recommended to have in an emergency medical bag for a family of four. I will link that website in the description box so that you can check that out. And then in this bag, I have a roller gauze as well as four rolls of tape. This particular tape here, this tape here is one that sticks to itself. So once you have the dressing wrapped around the particular wound, you could put this around it and it would stick to itself and not the person's skin. Otherwise, I've got three rows of this paper tape, which if you need to tape it to the person's skin, you can. And it's not so harsh on the skin. It doesn't pull as much as, say, adhesive tape might. So again, this bag, we've got a roller bandage as well as some tape. Another empty Ziploc bag for just in case. In this bag, I've got two disposable toothbrushes and a small travel size box of toothpaste. 
Now, when I was putting this bag together and I asked my sister, well, do you think I missed anything? She says, yeah, you don't have any toothbrushes and toothpaste in there. I'm like, well, it's the first aid bag. It's not a bug out bag. But she thought there should be some in here. And my husband also thought the same thing. So I do have two toothbrushes and a small box of toothpaste in this emergency bag. Also in this bag, I have some medication, so let me show you those. One of the things that I have in here is a box of artificial tears, and I like to have those on hand because I have dry eyes quite a bit, so I like to use that. They can also be used as an eye wash should I need that. I have a box of Visine eye drops, which are anti-itch for allergies and different things like that. And my husband likes to use those, so I have a box of these for that purpose as well. I also have a bottle of acetaminophen, which is the generic brand of Tylenol, and a bottle of children's chewable aspirin or baby aspirin. I also have a flashlight in here and the batteries are not in the flashlight. You don't want to leave batteries in the flashlight because they can corrode. In addition, I have a large square that I can use for a triangular bandage to form a sling on an arm should I need to do that. And then I have a queen size flat sheet which I can use as a blanket should I need a blanket to cover someone up. And then I've got four packs of gloves in here. I've got two size nine gloves and two size sevens. My husband has large hands, so he would use the size nines. I would use the size sevens, but if push comes to shove, I could fit into the nines. He wouldn't be able to get the sevens on. So that's why I have these in here. And they're just at the bottom of my bag. Now let me show you what's in the front of the bag. This is just an old belt. And I could use this as a tourniquet should I need to. And then just a packet of cotton balls. I just put about 10 or 12 cotton balls in this bag. And there's quite a bit in this pocket here. First of all, I've got a set of little cotton pads and these are actually little makeup pads that I use to remove makeup but you can use them to clean wounds or do other things with them if you need to in an emergency situation. I also have a bottle or shall I say a can of saline wound wash and this would be used to spray on a wound to clean it off to wash away any debris or anything like that. I also have a bottle of spray hand sanitizer in here. I've got a set of wire cutters, a pair of needle nose pliers. Remember, we fish a lot, so I need something that can take out fish hooks. And then in this pocket here, I just have a little identification tag right there. And then I've got two sets of batteries for the flashlight. So there's two sets of flashlight batteries down in here. You never want to leave the batteries in the flashlight because they can corrode. So that's why I separated them out. When I decided to put together my own emergency medical bag, I went to the site for the American Red Cross to see what they suggested. And they have a nice list for what they say a well-stocked first aid kit should have. And for the most part, I have everything in my kit that they suggested but there were two things that I don't have which I have not been able to find but that I am able to place an order for. One of those was a breathing barrier, one of those masks to put over the face of someone should I need to do CPR or mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. In the days of COVID, I certainly don't want to be doing mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation on anyone. The other thing they suggest is a instant cold compress an instant cold compress i guess it's one of those things that you just pop it and it's cold right away and you can put it on say an ankle sprain or something like that don't have anything like that around here so i know i'll try to get one of those ordered so then i'll have those to put in my bag but other than that 
I pretty much got everything in the bag that they suggested and then a few things that I customized such as the flashlight and the tools for um, taking out splinters and um, fish hooks and those kinds of things. They also mentioned to have two packets of aspirin and some packets of other pain relievers and I just put the whole bottles in the kit since it was easier for me to put them in the kit and the bottles are labeled rather than separate them out, have them in some kind of a baggie and they not be properly labeled. So I will put a link to the American Red Cross so that you can see what they suggest that you should have in your home for a first aid kit for a family of four. I will also put a link for one that you can just purchase should that be what you desire to do. And I also want to let you know that Dr. Joseph Allen, my friend at Dr. Eye Health, is creating a video to share with you what eye preps you need to have for eye health. I will link his video with an eye card above and in the description box below as well. Now in case you're wondering why I've been spending so much time talking about building a three month prepper pantry. And yes, this video is part of a series that I've been doing on building out a three month prepper pantry, prepping with Denise. It is because being prepared is the responsibility of a homemaker. It just makes sense to be prepared. It's like insurance. It's, you have car insurance, you have insurance on that stupid little phone you carry around every day. So your first aid kit, your food pantry, those kinds of things are insurance to help keep your family safe. And one of the books that I just love is this one, and it is called Home Comforts, The Art and Science of Keeping Home, and or rather The Art and Science of Keeping House by Cheryl Mendelson. And she has a chapter in it on being prepared. It is under the unit on safe shelter but being prepared is one of the chapters and in that chapter she talks about having an emergency medical box. So the things that I'm sharing with you are all a part of being a traditional homemaker in this very untraditional world. So that doesn't mean that as homemaker you're responsible for doing all of these things yourself. But someone's got to be responsible for putting this bag together and then someone's got to be responsible for grabbing the bag should you have to leave your home in an emergency. So I am suggesting that as homemaker, you make the list and you go about filling the bag, the box, whatever it is that you choose with the items that you've determined that is necessary for your family. And you might designate to your partner or someone else in your home that if we have to leave the house, it's your responsibility to grab the bag and it's the bag with the little white cross on it. It's up to the two of you to talk about that. And if it's you by yourself, then that means in addition to grabbing the baby and your handbag, you'll also have to grab this bag and figure out how to drag it out the door with you, which is why it's good to have a long handle like this on it because if you're by yourself and you have to have the baby in one arm, your handbag on the other, and be dragging this by the bag on the floor, you can do that. As homemakers, it's part of what we do. We rise to the challenge, and I'm starting to ramble, so let me stop. So here's my question for you. What's holding you back from creating a first aid kit or emergency medical bag for your family? Tell me in the comment section below. And just so you know, I've raised three children and I have managed a home for more than 45 years. I can teach you to be a traditional homemaker in an untraditional world. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying, you are not done yet. Click on the link in the comment section below and check out Dr. Joseph Allen at Dr. Eye Health on eye preps. And I will see you next time. Now I know some of you are saying, well, you don't have any alcohol in your bag, you don't have any peroxide and those kinds of things. Well, no, this is a portable bag. I've got alcohol in my medicine cabinet, I've got peroxide in my medicine cabinet, but those are not bottles of things that I would transport. If you think about how, 
how heavy this bag is now with just what's in it. Imagine trying to add a bottle of alcohol. That's why I have the little small alcohol prep pads so that I don't have to carry bottles like that. And then of course, just one bottle of water because I do have the bottle of wound wash. This bad boy is heavy. 